What is happening YouTube? Cowboy here and today I'm going to be giving you my before you start video for Neo. So the idea behind this video is to give you an overview of a couple things that I have found as I've gone through the game that I wish I knew back when I started. There's going to be six main aspects we're going to be covering in this video. Uh, the first being key and why it's so important. Moving on from there we'll be discussing build variety and stats. After that, elemental effects and the discord debuff. Uh, acquiring gear via revenants. Kodamas and why they're important. And then lastly, uses of the blacksmith. So first we're going to be talking about key and why it's so important. So key in Neo is that green bar we see up in the top left. And key is going to dictate whether we can block, whether or not we can attack, whether we're able to dodge or roll. And most importantly, if you end up getting hit while you have no key, it'll put you into a stagger state where you can end up receiving an attack that's either a grapple, which does a lot of damage, or an enemy can uh, basically stomp on you while you're on the ground, also doing a lot of damage. So to help offset this, we have something that's known as Key Pulse. Now, as you'll notice, after I expend all of my key, that bar is going to very slowly refill. But what you can do is you can hit R1 right as the bar would be topped off, and you'll do a Key Pulse, getting back that stamina that you expended. Now this is very important for two reasons. One, it's going to allow you to maintain your key at high levels, and on top of that, it's also going to allow you to dispel yokai pollution. As you end up fighting yokais, otherwise known as demons, throughout the game, they're going to create an aura on the ground, which will slow your key rate regeneration, and you're going to need to use key pulses to get rid of those. Now you can do a, a very weak key pulse even. Even a weak key pulse like that will end up getting rid of uh, yokai pollution. So. You don't have to go through a full combo to get rid of it, but just keep in mind that you're going to need to hit those. In addition to that, each of the weapon trees have a skill known as Flux, which will allow you to gain more key on a successful stance change during a key pulse. So using stuff like that, as well as Flash Attack, which allows you to do quick attacks while switching weapons during a key pulse, you can do some pretty interesting combos. For example here, if I expand out all of my key... You notice I did a double stance change right there and it ended up jumping my key up quite considerably. So just to show you again. You can see doing that double stance change gets it back. Uh, alternatively, you can also do weapon swaps with, once we have that skill, which will let you go into a combo and with enough skill, allow you to infinitely chain your attacks. So the last thing I want to show involving key is the break attacks that'll happen. So for that, I've summoned a revenant here that we're gonna fight. And we're going to let him just attack a couple times and run through all of his key. And once it gets low, we're going to hit him. And then that'll be the end of that. You can also make enemies use up their key a little bit faster by doing attacks such as kicks to them. Like this. Uh, and kicks are largely dependent on the weapon. They are a skill you can learn. But now that he has none, you can see I can pull triangle and do a grapple attack. Now, grapple attack is a learn technique with your weapons. Alternatively, if you don't have a grapple, you can still do a very powerful attack when the enemy is out of key. Just to show you that, you can attack them once, they'll fall on the ground. And then you can hit triangle and do your stomp for a very high amount of damage. Now we're going to be talking about stats and build variety. Now, one of the most helpful things, in my opinion, about Neo is that you can hit the options button on just about any menu. And as you can see, we get detailed tooltips giving us information on just about anything we could want to know. Uh, now, just in general, body is going to affect your life as well as boost the damage with your spears. Heart is going to affect your key and boost the damage with swords and bows. Stamina is going to affect your carry weight as well as cannon damage. Strength is going to affect uh, higher end armor as well as axes. Skill affects the dual swords, guns, and the more technical armor. Dexterity affects your capacity for ninjutsu as well as the Kasari Gama. Magic affects your Omyo and the capacity of that. And then lastly, Spirit is going to affect your Guardian Spirit. Now to go more in depth into some of those uh, heavy and technical armor things, going over here you can see that with this heavy armor right here at the bottom of the screen there it says Stamina Required 10, Strength Required 10, and basically what that means is that I can put on this armor right now and I'll, I'll get the, the defensive multiplier from it. But all those special effects you see right there, the damage reduction, life, uh, the reverse is lightning, the receive damage from attack, critical, the Amrita earn, the change to magic defense, we won't get any of those effects unless we have the 10 stamina, 10 strength. Now, what does this basically mean? In short, if you're going to be wearing heavier armor, you're going to need to have stats going into stamina and strength. 
Uh, on the other hand, if you want to end up using faster armor, more technical armor, for example, uh, this is a part of the ninja set armor. As you can see, those require body and skill. So what this basically means is that as a general rule of thumb, if you want to have a fast type build where you focus on Kusurigama or the dual swords, for example, body and skill should be your primary filler stats just to make sure you can use those armors, where if you're going for a more heavy build, uh, you want to be making sure you have strength and stamina. Now, with that being said, you're not necessarily locked to that. I think it's important to note that there is a lot of build variety in Neo. You could be a ninja that runs around in heavy armor if you want. Um, just for example, you know, that required 10-10, and right now I have 30 into dexterity for ninjutsu, which honestly is kind of overkill for a mat in the game. I'm just dumping stats into it because I'm fine with the light gear. But the fact remains, I could take 10 points out of dexterity, put 5 in strength, put 5 in stamina, and hit those thresholds, and then run around being a heavy armor ninja if I wanted to. Uh, in a similar fashion, if you wanted to be a, uh, a guy that has an axe, but he runs around in light gear, you could do that. You could simply have strength be your primary dump stat to make sure you have damage, but still have enough points in skill and body to ensure that you can wear the armors that I am that mainly affect the lightweight type stuff. Now along with creating your character, another important thing for consideration is going to be the weight of your armor. In Neo there are four separate agility types, A, B, C, and D. D is when you are over 100% equipment load, and with D agility you cannot roll whatsoever. Moving up from there we have C. This is anything between 70% and 100%. You have a somewhat short dash as well as a heavier roll. Up to B, which is anything between 30% and 70% of equipment load, you have a much smoother dash as well as a farther roll. And then lastly we have A class agility, which gives you both the farthest dash and the farthest roll. So now we're going to be talking about the elements of Neo and the effects as well as the Discord debuff. So you have five primary elements in Neo to choose from. Fire, which applies a quick damage over time effect. Water, which decreases the physical defense of the enemy. Wind, which reduces their attack damage as well as their break power. Lightning, which slows both their movement speed and attack speed. And then Earth, which increases all of their key costs. So to give a more in-depth look at Discord, we're going to be hitting this demon and getting a Discord buff on him. Now, what I want you to notice is right now my attacks are doing 203. That basic attack right there did 203. You're going to see a pretty big increase when we get Discord on him. But first, we're going to apply our fire debuff. A couple bombs we'll get that on. Okay, so now he has the fire debuff on, and you can see that on his health. And now he has Discord on as well. Now what you'll notice is we had 203 before. As you can see, we did 305 on that white tick right there. So in short, Discord ends up putting a very powerful debuff on the enemy. Uh, a couple things you'll notice, he wasn't able to regenerate key at all while Discord was in effect. And on top of that, they take a significantly larger amount of damage from your attacks. So in short, anytime you can apply Discord, especially on bigger enemies, you're going to want to because it's going to make things significantly easier for you. Now aside from the five primary elements of Neo, you also have status effects that can be applied, but these do not trigger the Discord buff. Now these are in general considered kind of ninja type things. Uh, going into the ninja tree here, we can see stuff for poison here in the form of shurikens, uh, weapon effects as well as a powder, and then also for paralysis as well. Uh, poison will do a very long damage over time effect on the enemy, and paralysis will freeze an enemy temporarily until they sustain a hit. Now, just to better demonstrate poison, since poison and fire are both damage over time abilities, we're going to get fire on him first, and then show you how poison looks in comparison. So as you can see with fire, we're getting relatively fast ticks here, and they're, on top of that, they're doing pretty good, uh, 65 damage per tick, but you'll notice fire is just about falling off. So fire is already falling off now. Now we're going to get him with poison instead. And now that poison is on him, you can see we're having much higher damage ticks, close to about 200 damage per tick. And on top of that, you'll notice the debuff is lasting a lot longer as well. So while we can't trigger Discord with poison, we can stack it with other things. So on that note, if you get Discord up uh, via like Fire and Lightning, for example, you can then put poison on top of it and just add more damage over time. But you can see um, the fire fell off right around the time he was at half health. We had probably about half of the duration of poison left when that demon died right there. 
So it ends up doing more damage and over a longer duration and compared to Fire's short damage over time effect. So now we're going to take a moment to discuss acquiring gear in Neo. So in games like Dark Souls or Bloodborne, you typically find your gear laying on the ground waiting for you to be picked up and it's always in the same place. But in Neo, this is not the case. In Neo, you do have to farm for your gear a little bit. Now you can get your gear in a variety of ways. Uh, you can get it by just killing monsters and having them drop it. You can see in the case of this monster, all he ended up dropping for us was an elixir. But that's really not efficient, uh, even though we can rest at shrines and respawn them. You know, you never know what you're going to get with the monster. It might be good, it might be bad. Um, and additionally, in the game, items that you find, such as this over here, more often than not, they're going to be consumables. As you can see, that was a sacred water, which isn't really something that we're interested in. So, you're, now you're probably asking, well, how do we get gear in this cowboy? And their answer is quite simple, and that is through the revenant system. So anytime somebody dies, they end up becoming a revenant. Now take this guy. He was beaten to death by Yokai on 2-6-2017. Uh, looks like it was 3-0-4 in the afternoon. A little lunch beat down. But he has two pieces of purple gear and four pieces of blue gear. So what we can do is we can summon this guy on in. And we'll just beat him down real fast. Don't you throw shit against me. There we go, and look at all the goodies he dropped for us. We got a purple helmet, we got a blue chest piece, we got some Ochoco to summon people, we got some blue boots, and we got a lightning katana. So in short, if you want to farm gear, uh, the best way to do it is going to be through revenants. What I generally do is uh, about every five levels or so, I'll take like 15 minutes and just kill a bunch of revenants in an area like this where, you know, I'm close to a shrine in case I die. And on top of that, there's plenty of revenants and minimal enemies, and I'll farm up as many as possible. Uh, I would recommend farming revenants in a side mission because they are significantly easier to complete. You don't have to go through all the way through the mission to kill the boss. Uh, that being said, if you just want to come in and farm some gear and get on out afterwards, you can always use a Himarogi Fragment, or alternatively, a Himarogi Branch to just return after you're done. So up next, we're going to take a moment to talk about Kodamas and why they're so important. So as you play through the journey of Neo, throughout the game you'll find these little green dudes hidden throughout the world. Uh, they always have funny little hats on, and they are almost always hidden somewhere that's hard to find. But, it is very important you collect them for two reasons. One, we get a blessing from them that we can equip in each zone. And as you can see, that involves either getting the amount of Emrita acquired by 25%, weapon drop rate by 5%, armor drop rate by 5%, elixir drop rate by 25%, or drop rate of materials by 25%. But also, looking in the bottom right corner there, you can see that I also have plus 5 to my elixir count. Now what that means is that any mission I do here in the Kyushu region, I will have plus five elixirs on top of whatever my base elixir count currently is, which is at the moment four. Uh, alternatively, if I go to a different region, one where I don't have all the Kodamas, you can see I have 21 out of 25, and that only gives me plus four elixirs to my account. Meaning that any mission I do here, I'll have eight elixirs versus the uh, nine elixirs I would have in the previous zones. Additionally, because it's a new zone, you have to reapply the blessing, of course, and find the Kodamas to max that blessing out again. But, in short, this is important because, one, you're getting a blessing that's going to be helpful, and then, two, on top of that, you're going to end up being able to carry more of the healing item. Now, to that end, one thing that will help you greatly in finding your Kodamas is something that's known as Kodama Sense. Now, you'll find this on a, a couple of different trinkets. Uh, there's a couple of Guardian Spirits that also have it. But, in short, if you have Kodama Sense on your mini-map up in the top right corner of your screen when you're running around, you'll see a little green dot indicating any time there is a Kodama nearby. So even if you end up getting a trinket that's low level that has Kodama Sense, it may be worth keeping it just for the fact that you can always put that on and do a run just to hunt down Kodamas. So before we wrap things up, let's talk about the blacksmith. So anytime you're at the world map, you can go to the starting point and select yes, the blacksmith, and there's a number of things you can do here. The first of which being buy and sell, which is pretty straightforward. You can sell the gear you have to get gold. Uh, 
if you go to buy, obviously there's different weapons you can pick up, which generally these aren't all that good. Uh, but if you go over into special finds, every now and then there is something that's worthwhile. Additionally, under the items tab and buy, you can pick up the book of reincarnations, which you can use to respec your character, although these do get increasingly more expensive as you continue to buy them. The first one being only 10,000, the second being 30,000, and the third now being at 100,000 for the purchase price. You can also pick these up uh, later through the tea house when you unlock that, as well as some missions offer them as well. The next option is forging. Now with forging you can make weapons and get a chance to get a weapon that's pretty good. As you can see, take this for example, it's a level 41 to 50 Kusari Gama. And as you can see, um, the differences in the damage go up as I go up in tiers. Now when you craft a weapon, you also have to pick the materials you're going to use. <clears throat> as you can see right here, using my Tamahagane, if I take three of that out and I put three of this in, you can see I now only have a 9% chance of it being purple. Whereas if I'm using a bunch of purple materials, that's a 21% chance of being purple. Uh, I could obviously get this higher if I had any of the high-end lacquer, but right now, if I was to forge this weapon, there's a 21% chance of it being purple, 29% chance of it being blue, 22 yellow, 28 white, etc. If I were to forge it, we can see I ended up getting a yellow one, uh, has decent damage, has some low attack damage, guard key usage. So all in all, not the best roll, but that is how you can forge weaponry. Uh, you can also do that, of course, with armor and tools. Tools is great because it's your reusable stuff that you use, such as the ambulance or uh, smithing materials, which you can use to craft these together. You know, if I have high quality lacquer, I can make the highest quality lacquer and then use that to increase my chance when forging weapons. Going into Soul Match. Now this is one that a lot of people seem to be confused about. Uh, what Soul Match will do is it will take a weapon you have, like this for example, level 49, and I can take a higher level weapon, such as this level 53 axe, and it will raise my Kusari Gama to level 53. Now there's a couple things initially with looking at this that may seem confusing. Uh, the first of which is you're seeing my damage goes from 425 to 414. You're probably wondering, well, why would you want to do that? And that's because of the familiarity bonus. Because this weapon is at a max familiarity of 900 out of 900, the attack goes up to 425. If this was at zero familiarity, on the other hand, and it stayed at level 49, you can see if I were to soul forge it with this, my damage would go down to 398. Now, if I was to take this axe, for example, however, and forge that over, you can see the base damage is now going to go up to 414 on this. Now, on one hand, you may say, well, what's the point of doing this when I could just find new weapons? And it's really going to come down to the gear you have. With this Kusari Gama, for example, <clears throat> this is part of the Head of the Ego Ninja set. So because of that, and because of the set bonuses that I'm getting from using this, along with the Ego Jonin apparel I have, I really want to keep this weapon on. So because of that, it's worthwhile to soul match it to keep leveling up. Additionally, as you get later into the game, uh, you'll end up getting things that will let you craft those particular set pieces. For example, if I go into the armor, where is it at? You can see I can craft pieces for the Raging Bull set. So in short, this allows you to uh, either craft pieces of set gear that you already had up to a higher level, or use the soul match function to raise those up. Uh, same thing functions for defensive gear. If I want to, uh, you know, I want to maintain my set bonus here, which is at level 44. I can go through here, pick a nice high level piece of gear, take this, this is level 53. Here we go, level 52, I could use this. It will raise that up to level 52, increasing my defense. Uh, the important thing to note, of course, is as you continue to soul match though, the cost will increase. You can see taking this piece from level 44 up to level 52 is going to cost me 80,000 gold, which that is why you may want to just go and sell a bunch of stuff to get that gold. Moving on from there, we have Refashion, probably one of the coolest things in the game. Refashion quite literally lets you turn your weapon into the look of any other weapon that you have previously found. Here we see a list of all the Kusari Gamas that I've encountered as I've played through the game. And for a very small cost, I can take this and I can change it into any one of these that I want. So in short, if you end up finding a piece of armor that has really great stats, but it really looks goofy, um, you know, let me find the, the armor I was using that looked really kind of silly. Yeah, like one of these. If you don't like having little balls on your chest, but it has great stance, take it and turn it into a ninja thing, and then you look like a ninja. Um, here we can unlock through talking to the blacksmith. 
But the last thing I want to discuss really here is Reforge. Now, what's important about Reforging is you can use this to make your weapons better for you. So take, um, let's see, let's take, take a, let me find something with a couple stats. Take this, for example. Um, now looking at this, we can see I have damage from behind is up by 14%. Low attack key reduction is increased by 10%, and then increased chance of the break. Now the break has a symbol on it, which means I can't change it. As you can see, this is locked. Special effects with this cannot be reforged. But let's say I like using the high stances on my weapons. I can select both of these, reforge. Okay, don't like either of those, reforge. And look at that, there we go. High attack break and the high attack damage. So now, anytime... I attack from high stance, I'm going to increase the damage of those attacks by 9.2% and in addition increase the break chance by 9.8%. And the beautiful thing about this is if you get a fantastic piece of gear, and this happens all the time with armor, uh, take armor for example, you know, this has matchlock damage stuck on it because it's rifle captain's armor, it has damage reduction on it, damage from behind, but let's say I don't want gold earned, you know, I have lots of gold, I can reforge that and now I have lightning defense. Um, and you can keep reforging this, like, as, ton as long as you have fragments and gold to do it, you can reforge this basically endlessly. And there we go. For example, now I got a yellow fix on it, giving me 23 to life. So the point is, if you have a piece of gear that seems fantastic, but it has one thing on it that you're not really a fan of, reforge the hell out of it until it's beautiful for you. The last yes, thing I should discuss, <laughs> which I almost forgot, um, real fast, we have disassemble, of course. Very similar to selling, you can actually disassemble weapons to get raw materials. You can also hit R2 to check a bunch, and you can see I'll get a ton of materials doing that. Um, and the other thing I want to discuss is the dialogue. As you spend more and more time doing stuff with the blacksmith, you can go to the dialogue, and you'll have something that says, I have a request for Tomoe here. If you select that, you'll have patronage levels, and then you can use that to increase something particular. In my case, I'm a big fan of forging cost discount as well as sell price markup. Um, you can put one in to unlock the barber menu, obviously early if you want, as well as getting additional stock or additional special finds. But basically, the more things you do with the blacksmith, the more you can level up her patronage, which will benefit you more in the long run. So that's going to wrap things up for the Getting Started with Neo video. Hopefully you guys found all of these tips helpful, and hopefully you enjoy your time spent in the land of Neo. I know I sure as hell am. So with that being said, thanks for coming by. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to drop a like, and we will catch you next time with more Neo.